Welcome to December's Leco Challenge. This problem is called Game of Life. According to the Wikipedia's article, the Game of Life, also known simply as Life, is a cellular automation device by the British mathematician John Horton Conway in 1970. Now the board is made up of m times n grid of cells, where each cell has an initial state, alive, represented by a 1, or dead, represented by a 0. Each cell interacts with its eight neighbors, horizontal, vertical, and diagonal, and use these following rules. Here are the rules. Any live cell with fewer than two live cell neighbors uh, dies. So it turns from a one to a zero. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on. So that just stays as a one. And any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies as if by overproduction. So that also becomes a one to a zero. Now any dead cell uh, with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell as if by reproduction. All right, so we have these four rules here. I think that's going to be important. And what we'll do is uh, traverse through our grid and simply check its neighbors. Uh, if we don't care about memory, we can just create a temporary uh, 2D array and store the next state in that array. Uh, after we finish, we could just replace the original board with all the values inside that temporary array. Uh, now there is a monkey wrench here to do it in place without using extra memory, but let's start with trying to solve this uh, without caring about extra memory. Okay, so the path that I'm going to go here is what we'll do is uh, first initialize some variables uh, like you know the call number of rows and and columns and stuff as well as our temporary array. Uh, we're going to write a helper function here. And this helper function is going to check all its neighbors and return the next state into the temporary array. So into the temporary array. And finally, we're going to uh, go iterate through our 2D array uh, using our helper function. And then replace the board with our temporary values. Okay, so let's start with uh, initializing some variables here. We'll start with our n, I'll say m and n, and this will just be the length of board, oops, as well as the length of the first array inside the board. So this will be length of board, zero. Okay, we also need to have our temporary array here, and this will just start with a bunch of values of none. So we'll just say none. Uh, multiply that by the number of columns, which is n, and we'll do this inside of a. Um, let's see here, inside of a. Does this work? Inside of a list comprehension, so for whatever in range of m. So is that right? I believe that's right. Yeah. So this will be number of columns, and the number of rows. So cool. All right, so now we should write our helper function. And we need to make sure that we have all our rules in place. So let's copy paste this here. And this is gonna help us write our uh, our helper function here. So what do we need to pass into a helper function? Well, we're gonna make it a function within the function. So we'll have all these sort of as global variables. So all we need to really pass in is the row and column that we wanna check. Okay, so now, so for every position, all eight positions, which is gonna be up, down, left, right, and the diagonals, uh, we need to check the, the counts, right? All right, so let's start with creating a, a list of tuples that are gonna have all the directions in here. So this might take a little time, let's see. Uh, the first item is going to be the x coordinate and second value is going to be the y coordinate. So if we want to go up, it's going to be uh, 0, 1, right? Now if we want to go um, down, it's going to be what? 0, minus 1. Okay, so let's also have coordinates for left and right, which is going to be 1, 0 and negative one, zero. And finally, we need all the diagonals. Uh, let's see, so if we go 
northeast we're gonna go one one northwest is gonna be one negative one and it's gonna be one one negative one negative one all right so these are all eight directions that we need to check all right so first we'll initialize our count number of live cells around our neighbors and start with zero i'm going to say four let's say x y and p we're going to first make sure that it's in bounds and we have our uh, length of the columns and rows <coughs> And then we also want to check to see if it's alive. And if it is, then we'll increase our counter by one. So if, let's make sure I get this right here. Uh, zero, zero. So let's start with the row R plus Y is less than M and C plus X is less than N. Gosh, so let's, this and board r plus y and c plus x if this is equal to one then we will increase our counter by one now finally we're going to have our number of counts and it depends on these four situations here right so if the board let's first say if it's alive then we have are a couple conditions. Um, if the count is less than two, then we can return a zero because it goes from one to zero. Now else if count is two or three, then it continues to live. Otherwise, if it's greater than that, it also dies. Now, if the cell is dead, we want to check to see if the count is equal to three, right? So if count is equal to three, then it's going to turn back alive. Otherwise, it dies. Okay, so now we have our helper method. That's great. And we have all four cases taken care of. So all we need to do now is iterate down our, our board. So we'll say four are in range of m for c in range of n uh, we'll take our temporary array and we'll make that equal to the whatever value we return from our helper method so rc okay so now that we have our next state in our temporary array we need to replace everything in our original board uh, with the values inside our temporary array. So this would be like this. And we take our board here and replace that with our temp. All right, so let's see if this works. All right, does look like it's working. So let's submit that. And there we go, accepted. So time complexity wise, this would be M times N times eight, which becomes m times n. But the trick the problem here is we use extra memory, right? With our temporary array here, we also use m times n extra memory. So uh, the follow-up here, if we want to solve it in place, how could we do that? Well, if we want to solve it in place, we can't have this temporary array here. So normally with these sorts of questions, there's three approaches. One, there's either some sort of pattern you can take where you could um, not really have to care about the next state. Uh, but here, because we're going eight directions, that's really not realistic. So we'll abandon that. Uh, second approach might be to use multiple pointers. But again, uh, can't really do that with eight directions. It's just too complicated. And uh, the final way we might be able to do it is to actually uh, add the next value inside of the array board itself. So instead of using this temporary array, we're going to store that information inside the original board and then update it afterwards. So let's do that. Let's see if we can do that. And because we only have two states here, um, alive or dead, one and zero, what we can say is, all right, if it's alive and we know that we're going to turn it to dead, we'll increase that to two. So if it's a one, uh, but we know it's going to die the next time, we'll make it a two. So that way we can 
know that hey this originally is uh, was a was alive same way if this was a zero and we know that's going to turn back alive we'll make it a negative one and that way we can say all right then we can track later um, we know this is dead but we can update it later to say i right, make it alive again so to do that um, we can get rid of our temporary and we will say instead of equaling to one we'll say if it's greater than zero Uh, then we're going to increase our count because we know that the original state was alive, even though we're going to turn it to a dead later. Okay, so let's see here. If, same way here, we have to say if this is greater than zero, we know it's alive. Uh, all these remain the same. Well, actually, no, no, they don't. Uh, this does. This remains the same. But if we know it's going to go from one to two or one to dead, we will make it a two. Now, otherwise, if um, we know it's less, less or equal to zero, uh, we, if we know that it's going to come back alive, we'll make it a negative one. Otherwise, we'll keep it at dead. So let me see here if this uh, works. Yeah, so what we do is instead of passing this original board, and we'll have to go through it again. But this time we'll say, all right, if board um, C is equal to two, that means we have to make it dead. So it was alive, but now it's going to be dead. Else if board RC is equal to negative one, then we know we're going to make it back alive. All right, so I hope that makes sense. And it looks like it's working, so submit that. All right, accepted. So that concludes the problem. Um, like I said, usually with these in-place problems, like you want to be able to store that state information inside the original board itself. It's easier when it's binary like this. Sometimes you could keep track, um, you know, use the positive or negative sign to keep track of that. Um, but hopefully that that helps. And yeah, I think we'll end it here. All right, thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.